So, so clearly there's a big disappointment here relative to, to what investors were expecting. What's, uh, what's the reason for why hard seltzer numbers disappointed? Yeah, let me, yeah, let me just give you a little context, Wolf, just to start, cause, and I'll explain that. I mean, first of all, if you look at the first half of the year performance, we're up like 50% on net revenue, 60% in EPS. Uh, in the first half of the year, we're 4%, only 4% of the volume of the total beer business, but 45% of the growth. So way disproportionate growth for a small company that only represents 4% of the category. The two, the two fastest growing brands in the category, Truly Hard Seltzer, which I'll explain in a second, and Twisted Tea. So we have the two fastest growing brands. Truly, to be clear, has been a huge success this year. It's outgrowing the category by three to one. So we're gaining share. Our innovation has been very successful by far the most successful innovation in the category this year. In fact, if you look at all the households across the U.S., there's, no, there's nothing in more households other than, you know, Bud Light beer and then truly is number two. So people have embraced the brand. The issue is the category. And the category is sort of, you know, it's, it's a nascent category. It's been growing triple digits. It's now growing. And we went to high double digits. And then in May and June, on this COVID overlap from a year ago, went to low double digits. That was a surprise, I think, for all of us. And with that, it affected, obviously affected Truly's growth rate, although Truly is still outgrowing the category significantly. So you have sort of this S-curve going on right now. And I think we're at the inflection point of that S-curve. And guess what? When you're on the curve, you don't see the inflection point until sure. till, till you're off it. So that, that's sort of where we are in, in hard seltzer. But it's still to be clear, hard seltzer is growing. You know, households are, are still growing. And it's growing, you know, low double digits. And the question is, does it grow 10, 20, 30, or 40 percent in the future? But it has come down, no question about it. It's come down from the high, you know, the high double-digit uh, growth I, rates. I, I t t totally get, David, that long-term path and trend that, that you're on, uh, including because of Truly, has been has been very strong. But 25% drop in the share price uh, highlights the scale of difference in performance today relative to what the investment community's expectation was. And I guess the question there is, at what stage during the past quarter? I mean. Uh, Jim Cook was on with us uh, three months ago. He could not have been more positive about Truly. And clearly something has happened uh, different from how you'd guided, from the tones you'd put out before, including mid-quarter at various conferences. When did you realize uh, that things had slipped behind expectation? And, and why, why wasn't there sort of more guidance uh, along those lines to the investment community? Yeah, that's a fair question. I mean, here, think of it this way. There, there's two big overlaps this year versus you know, last year. So COVID obviously hit big stock up in the category a year ago. There was a March-April stock up period where everybody grabbed as much as they could and took it home. And then there was a May-June time period. When we last spoke, when Jim was here, and when we did some conferences even in May, we had cleared easily that first overlap, right? And so did the category. So going into mid-May, toward Memorial Day, we felt very confident in where the category was going to go. We knew, we knew all along we we're going to grow share. And we're the question is how much we're we going to grow based on where the category goes. It really started to happen around Memorial Day. You know, as we hit the holidays in the summer, we didn't see it come back the way we had expected. And I think one of the things that's going on here is that that's different than the March, April time period is that, you know, the country was opening up, you know, in May and people were going out to bars and restaurants. And that's where, you know, hard seltzer isn't that well developed in those channels yet. It will be and it's getting there, but it's not. So the trade off from sort of grocery and liquor store purchases and consuming at home to bars during that time period, particularly as the summer hit, is really what hit us. And honestly, it like it hit hard and fast. And find somebody out here who who knew it was going to hit that fast. And that's if the timing didn't look doesn't look good. We you know we we don't look very smart by missing on that on that guidance. But everything we knew when we guided, everything we talked about in May afterward looked really good. You know, look to that 40 to 50 percent. Now we're 25 to 40. We missed and we're paying the we're paying the price. But let's be clear, no. 25 to 40 percent growth in a category that's basically flat. I don't think there's another publicly company, publicly traded beverage company, ALK or non-ALK, that comes even close to that kind of top line growth. And, you know, what we've got to do now going forward is put our noses down and keep delivering great results, push for, you know, get, gain as much share as we can, because as the category consolidates, hard health is going to consolidate. We were, a year ago, a distant number two. Now we're very, very close, number two, knocking on the door, number one. And we're going to benefit as the category starts to consolidate and a lot of these lesser brands start to peel off. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.